All right. So we're just about finished and ready to test this thing out. I did not film all the rewiring work. And I will show you why in a second, because I did film putting in the neutral wire. So we'll cut to that. And after that, we'll be back for a test.
Let's see if this is going to work. The schematic on the right is what I came up with as far as how I want the unit to work. The one on the left is how it was originally wired. So if you want to take a look at that, you can pause the video, study it a bit, whatever. So anyway, this is what we came up with as far as the completed wiring. This cord is probably a lot longer. It's longer than I thought it was. <laughs> I'm probably going to end up maybe cutting this in half, probably. Because this is an 18 gauge cord. Well, it might be fine running it on a vacuum or something like that there'll probably be some power loss using this just due to resistance of the wiring but I'll probably cut it down it won't be that hard it's only three wires to remove and redo I added a strain relief here for the cord there was none the original cord only had a knot tied into it so that is definitely not going anywhere. And um, yeah, I guess let's try it out. The other thing that I did was I soldered the bracket to the vacuum tube just to give it a little bit more stability when you're pushing the vacuum nozzle onto it. I do need to come up with a new ball. This one is probably fairly serviceable. There's a hole in the bottom of it because this screw here was about, I don't know, yeah, it was right here. This was the screw that was in there. And I, I don't know if that was done on purpose to hold the ball in or not, but there was glue on the tube. So I'm going to end up putting some glue in here just to seal it and to hold it. But I will be looking for something to replace that with at some point. So let's try this thing out. Don't have a vacuum in hand right now. Well, I do, but it's in the other room. So we're just going to plug my heater into it for the time being. All right. Well, I plugged it in and the light on the heater came on. So that's good. No sparks flew and nothing blew yet. So, well, just for safety's sake for the time being. Turn the meter on. Okay. Nothing changes. Switch to test. Okay. Our indicator comes on like we wanted it. And the pilot light on the heater has turned off. So switching to test disables the outlet and should have enabled our banana jacks. Hundred and twenty two volts. Okay, that looks good. And if we switch back to a hundred and fifteen volt, we're showing nothing but a little bit of residual probably just capacitance showing there. All right. So let's turn on the heater and see what happens. So the heater turned on. So that works, that much works. 
Let's turn on our meter. Okay, meter works, that's low. That's high. And low again. Let's see what, well, I'm not going to push it with that switch because that switch sucks. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. But all right, now here's the real test. So now what our goal is when we switch this to test is we'll basically be using this well I won't be using it for this but the idea was that it would be used for to say check your commutators on your motor or uh, like I said I don't know what the actual theory of operation of this unit originally was but As I had said in a previous video, running this with that tiny indicator bulb or even a 100 watt light bulb in there to run the outlet like it was doing was basically pointless because the bulb's going to light, the motor's not going to run. And possibly the only thing you could do with it would be to turn the motor by hand as it's powered up and watch for any variance in the light. I think having it set up like this would be much more functional. I wouldn't say it would be safe. I would not recommend doing it. However, again, 1950s, you know. Anyway, so we've got nothing here, and as we showed when we did the test, when it was switched to the 115 volts, there was no voltage on our banana jacks. So we'll switch to test, get the leads up on the table, I don't want to be touching them, I don't know the quality of these things, they're old military surplus leads. So, switch to test. All right, our indicator comes on telling us that our jacks are live. And here's where we shot out smoke and sparks the last time. Well, that was uneventful. But on the plus side, it does what I wanted it to. Essentially, this can be used as a probe to check your motor, to check your whatever, and it will light the light. Again, would not recommend using it for that, and most likely it will never be used for that. To me, it seems a lot more functional than what it was before because it seemed to not really like if you'd switch it in test mode it really didn't accomplish much I mean the indicator and the bulb were wired in parallel and it was wired into the outlet not to mention it was wired to the case as well. We'll finish up the job, put it all back together, button it up. I took so much time getting that wiring all nice and neat, it's a shame nobody's probably ever going to see it. Well, I got the washer for it. I'm sure it'll turn up. I 
actually had one of the cool looking glass fuses in a 15 amp setting. It was down in an old uh, fuse box that I had. Unfortunately, it's blown. But we're going to take it and pop it in there. It'll make a cool thumbnail anyway. Thanks for watching.